Hey, Baron. How are you today? Hey. Hey, Bonnie. I'm okay. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. Well, I, I want to ask you, first off, how, how you're doing through this whole isolation thing. Because, I, I listen, it's hard on all of us. There's no question. But for somebody who's used to being out there, doing stand-up, keeping himself busy, are you, like, chomping at the bit to get out back on the stage? <laughs> Well, I mean, that's that's the question that every comedian across the United States is asking themselves. Um, yes and no. I mean, I've been doing stand up for almost 20 years. Um, I, I am I've you know, like you said, I'm always out there. Uh, but, you know, I have a wife and two children. So I have always been like, oh, I want to be at home. You know, I want to hang out with my wife and my two children. And now that I can't get away from them, uh, I am very happy. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Listen, I'm sure you're just collecting lots of new material for your next stand-up special. <laughs> Absolutely. It's been great. You know, I feel really bad for the kids, obviously. Luckily, we have a yard so they can be outside and run around, but they can't see their little friends. You know, they can't go to the park and all this stuff. So we're, we're, we're you know, we, we, we're trying to stay sane, but, you know, I think that this pandemic in at large, you know, I think for most people, um, I think it's really making people question <laughs> how they were living their lives before the pandemic happened. I think it's making all of us kind of take stock, see what we take for granted, and, and rearrange our priorities, which is valuable. It is valuable, uh, but it's also very, very, very hard and <laughs> very, very difficult. Yeah, you are absolutely right, though. We, we, it, it has made everybody think, I think, for sure. And I know it's made me think about baking and cooking way too much. So that's a whole other story. But anyway, uh, <laughs> listen. But those are the stories we're, we're gonna that, have... that are important for you to think about, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. That is for sure true. Uh, but now you're going to give us some some laughs, some levity with um, with the great debate. And th this show is a riot. And, and you are no stranger to the debate stage because you hosted Sci-Fi Wire's The Great Debate, the live panel at uh, New York uh, Comic Con last year. And then you were a panelist at South by Southwest. So when they asked you to kind of host it, were you kind of like, wow, this is amazing? <laughs> Well, yes, of course, I did think that, but it was uh, that thought was buried under uh, my nerves. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that thought was buried under, oh my goodness, am I the right person to do this? Um, but because, you know, I, first of all, I had fun doing the shows. Um, when I had hosted in Comic-Con, I walked off the stage with a bunch of notes for myself uh, of how to make it better, which luckily I was able to apply to the TV show Great Debate. So, and I had the assistance of, TJ Chambers and Megan Deneen, who are producers on the show, you know, help put the whole thing together, uh, which is true for the Comic-Cons as well. So it's the brainchild of those people, um, but it is a labor of love. And that's what I have to remember down, you know, down deep that it's fun. This is very fun. It's fun to hang out with people, fun to talk about all this silly stuff. And it's just good to kind of relax and laugh and, and not have to think about everything that's going on. You need to take a load off here and there. Yes. And you, you do work with a lot of funny people. I mean, the panel changes and there's some hilarious, but the, you know, for people who aren't familiar with the show, I mean, you, you debate the craziest topics, you know, like uh, who's the worst dad or, or whatever, Darth Vader or, or, or worst boss, Darth Vader, or Joker, et cetera. There's so many of these fun things for, for nerds and comic fans and everything. Um, yeah, but I can't imagine though, when you're doing this show or doing these debates that you just, how do you not stop from like just losing it and laughing so hard that you can't bring yourself back. Who said that I didn't? <laughs> Who said that I stopped myself? Uh, <laughs> that's where editors come in. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, and they're just kind of like, all right, everyone's having a giggle fit. We're going to have to. Uh, there were a bunch of different times stuff like that happened where I or one of the cast members or even somebody that was in the studio audience just was so tickled by a subject or a point that somebody made. Um, it makes us very happy because it, make, it, it it lets us know that the show is working. You know, it lets us know that this is striking a chord with people. Um, but again, it's a, it's very silly. So I like to live in that world. So I'm, I'm comfortable in the place of laughter. So it's easy for me to kind of, especially when the joke is not laughing. If I cannot laugh in service of getting a laugh, it makes it very easy. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, I have to tell you, like, I'm just such a huge Grace and Frankie fan. Whenever they come out, I'm done. Like, I, I, I oh, get, the, get to see them before. They're, everybody gets to see them. And I just love them. And you are so good on that show. But it's like, I, I just love watching your scenes. So my great debate question for you is, who is more intimidating to me, Lily Tomlin or Jane Fonda? Jane Fonda. When you first uh, started the show. What did you say? Like when you first started the show, because Lily Tomlin, you know, comedian extraordinaire, and then there's Jane Fonda, no words. So yes, who, who would yes. be your debate? Who would be more intimidating to you? Well, definitely it was Jane Fonda. I mean, Jane is, I love, I mean, I love both of them, but Lily, because she's a comedian, you know, and she's a, she's a influence on me. And uh, I've been watching her uh, for a number of years and she's always made me laugh, you know, um, which I've been watching Jane Fonda for a number of years. She has also made me laugh, um, usually when she's in a movie with, with Lily Tomlin, like nine to five. But, uh, you know, uh, Jane is a very, there's somebody said something, there's a difference between uh, demanding respect and commanding respect. And Jane Fonda is a person who commands respect. You know, she doesn't, um, she doesn't throw her weight around. She just knows how to hold herself and she doesn't suffer fools. Um, and, and Lily, because, because of her being a comedian, mostly there's already a, a kind of a kinship, you know, it was very easy for me to be like, that's my mom, you know, because in some way she's always, uh, I have already learned so much from her. It wasn't hard for me to endow her with those qualities. Um, whereas with, with, whereas with Jane, you know, she is just, she's a very intense woman, but of course we're working on a comedy and she's also working with one of her closest friends in the world, Lily Tomlin. So it's really cool to see all that kind of melt away, especially after the years that we've been working together and being like, wow, Jane Fonda actually likes me. <laughs> you know, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I'd say for sure. Yeah. Listen, I was in an elevator with her once and I just can't believe how amazing she looks like. That's just to me beyond that. She's, she's fabulous. She's, she really is uh, as you are. And, and I know that season seven is coming, but of course, because the pandemic, you guys couldn't, but you did have a zoom reunion uh, not too long ago. Yes. So can you give us any teeny hints for the final season as to what, what we can expect? Well, to be honest, you know, um, we were in the midst of filming the final season when we had to shut production down because of the pandemic. Um, co coincidentally, I was also filming The Great Debate about that same time. Uh, but we didn't get too far, so we are still working on it. Um, obviously, we can't go back to set. There, there are discussions and plans uh, being made to make that happen. Um, you know, nothing too soon, obviously. But that's just to say that scripts are still being worked on. Uh, and I actually don't know a lot of what's going to happen in season seven yet. So I am still, for the actors on a TV show, the script is like watching the show. It's the first time that we see where we're going, you know, and, and, and a lot of the times it surprises us. Um, so, but right now, I have, we didn't even get halfway through the season, so I have no idea. I just know that it'll be All great. right. I'm sorry. It will be good. Fair you. enough. I can't wait to see it. I, I Listen, I'll, I will calm down and I will wait with everybody else. But anyway, thank you so much for your time, Baron. Best of luck with the great debate. It's just a riot to watch. So much fun. Something we, we need right now in this time. And uh, and I will look for you, of course, on Grace and Frankie and everything else that you do. And when, when this pandemic is over, please come to Toronto and visit us in person. We'd love to see you here. I love Toronto. I've been there many times. Uh, I have friends there. I've played at the Comedy Bar. I've played at Rivoli. Yep. Uh, so I, I can't wait to be able to come back and do some stand-up in Toronto. Good stuff, my friend. Take care and uh, best to you and your family. Uh, keep well and safe. Uh, goodbye.